Hi guys, my name's Steve from Vorsprung Suspension here in Whistler. Uh, we're going to run you through a quick little video here. Uh, the new Fox Float X2 and something that came to market a bit earlier, Cane Creek Double Barrel Air. Have a look at some of the similarities and some of the differences and uh, hopefully show you guys some interesting stuff inside these two shops. Alright, so laid out here we have Double Barrel Air and a Float X2. First glance, pretty similar internally. Uh, the, the layout of the damper is pretty well identical. The details though do, uh, do differ from shock to shock and so we're going to have a bit of a look at those. So we have here um, a high and low speed adjuster assembly out of the X2. Uh, so this one here and out of a Cane Creek. This adjuster is actually out of a coil. Uh, but just to show you the similarities. So they're both a poppet valve system for the high speed adjustment. That means as you wind the high speed adjuster in, uh, it compresses this spring, preloads the poppet valve against the valve seat. So the valve seat is the part in the reservoir bridge here. Um, and that central hole you can see is what it's, what it's covering, preventing oil flow through, or restricting oil flow through, I should say. So, uh, the low speed flow in both cases comes through these uh, little holes in the middle and there's low speed metering needles uh, that restrict the oil flow through there. Once the pressure builds up enough to open the poppet valve though, uh, the available flow area is much higher through that. The similarity in the poppets there is uh, really very large. They are pretty much identical. Um, the the difference, as always, is in the details. For example, this uh, Fox poppet only has a single shim here that is able to bleed oil before the poppet uh, spring preload is overcome. The Cane Creek has three. Uh, how substantial that difference is, not something I can quantify just yet. So, next thing to look at. The main piston assemblies on these. So both of these shocks use twin tube recirculating uh, dampers like the, in the same vein as the Olin's TTX technology, uh, which is actually what Cane Creek originally licensed. How it is that Fox uses technology without infringing patents uh, is <laughs> something I don't know and uh, I'm sure I'll find out at some stage in the future. But the critical difference between these two, just gonna grab an analogy here, Critical difference between these two pistons though, Cane Creek runs very, very stiff shim stack. I'm not sure if you can see that in there. Uh, very heavily sprung, um, very heavily valved, I should say, although a shim stack is essentially a type of spring. There is no dishing over the compression valve, uh, the compression ports there. So, what that means is that as oil flows through these compression ports, uh, the shim stack will start deflecting at essentially next to zero pressure. So that means that oil is, for all intents and purposes, always flowing through this piston. The Fox one, however, uses a different setup. This piston is dished. What that means is that the shim stack here is uh, preloaded to a certain degree, and that preload is adjusted with a small spacer shim uh, on the inside there. So Fox provide a couple of different configurations for valving for the Float X2. Uh, they only have a single one uh, listed or made public uh, for the DHX2, the coil shock. Uh, Cane Creek use one size fits all valving on uh, their shocks. So there's a couple of differences there. Now one of the other things that I am very interested in is always reliability. So. Looking at the architecture of the main damper seal head here, this is the Fox one. It uses a DU bushing on this side as well as DU bushing on this side. The Cane Creek one, by contrast, only has a DU bushing on one side. So what this means is that the Cane Creek one on the shaft is relatively flimsy. It has a bit of flex to it. Um, the Fox one, however, is extremely stout. It's very, very rigid on the shaft, forcing things through seals here. Don't do this at home. So the Fox one, the rigidity of the shaft inside that seal head is great. Very, very good. I think uh, this is 
without actually having had these in the field for long enough, it's very hard to say. But I'd be very surprised if this didn't end up being a much more reliable system than the DB Air seal head. What I'm saying with that is the DB Airs are prone to sucking air in through the seal head and into the uh, from the air spring into the damper. I think the Fox one will be a little more robust uh, because of that much stiffer seal head assembly. The next main difference in uh, in the damper is the double barrel air with the climb switch has the ability to shut off both high, uh, sorry, both rebound and compression low speed circuits. So what that means is that all the flow that's happening uh, with the climb switch switched on is essentially going through the high speed, uh, the high speed popper valves, obviously as well as the main piston in the compression stroke. As a result, the lockout firmness. Uh, which is, when I say lockout, it's not a lockout. It doesn't actually lock the shock rigidly. Uh, but the firmness of the feel that you get, the platform, if you will, uh, from the climb switch is dictated by what your high-speed compression settings are. The Float X2 that I have here is one of the uh, pre uh, two position systems. So the new ones do come with a, like a, their version of the climb switch. They call it two position adjust. Um, and what that means is essentially that you have a climbing platform. I haven't pulled one apart yet. I'm pretty sure it works in a similar manner uh, by shutting off the low speed compression circuit. So there's some other differences that we have here in the architecture of these. The seal head, uh, sorry, the valve seat design is quite different. Can we see that there? Yeah. So the valve seat design in the Fox is visibly quite different to the Cane Creek. Uh, you do need a special tool for the rebound one, uh, it's just an allen key for the compression check valve and valve seat. I like this system better from a service serviceability point of view. Um, it's much easier to get the tools in there and do it up to torque. The Cane Creek valve seats go to a very low torque and the little tool, the pin tool that they have for that is kind of crappy. It's very easy to bend the pins. Um, the torque on these is also very, very low and from time to time we have seen them come loose. The big difference in terms of performance for most people though, I think, the, the dampers are very similar. Having thrown them on the dyno, we see similar uh, characteristics. They behave in a very similar way. It's not a huge surprise given the layout of the damper. But the big difference in my opinion is the air spring. Cane Creek air spring is what I would consider an old school air spring. What that means is that it equalizes pressure between the positive and negative chamber uh, through this little port. Can we see that in there? Maybe, maybe not. Uh, it does that very close to the start of the travel. What that results in is a very stiff initial spring rate, uh, something that becomes proportionally softer at the end, uh, sorry, through the middle and the end stroke is adjusted by volume spaces. So you can have it be fairly linear towards the end. By linear, I mean it's not ramping up, the spring rate isn't changing substantially, or we can have it more progressive, so the spring rate is changing substantially. The X2, however, now this is a bit more refined. This has uh, their Evol system, which employs a similar concept to what we have with the corset. So the idea here is that it equalizes a bit further into the travel, and this has three equalization ports instead of one. I don't know if you can see that very clearly in that. Uh, a little further into the travel with a bigger negative chamber volume. What this means is compared to the Cane Creek air spring, you have something that's softer at the start, it gives it you know, a feel much closer to a coil uh, and more supportive in the middle. The end stroke again is adjusted by volume spaces that sit in the positive chamber of the air spring. Uh, the way they've constructed this is actually really quite cool. There's several parts to the air can. Um, I guess three parts in the same way that there are with the Cane Creek. Um, yeah, there's a lot of really cool machining going on in this, as there is with the Cane Creek actually. Both of these are really, really nicely finished. So, the conclusion of all that is that these are very, very similar uh, shock absorbers. Everything they do is laid out in a similar way. I think from an outright performance point of view, the X2 uh, definitely gives you better, better feel and better traction, primarily due to the air, the air spring characteristic being much better than the Cane Creeks. 
the this is the same performance difference that people saw between the old style fox sleeves and putting our corset sleeves on there for example um, that's not to say I don't think these can be improved I think they can but for a uh, for an OEM product these are very good Cane Creeks um, they haven't really followed along uh, the trend with the air springs here I think part of the reason for this is that the amount of uh, room that they have between their air can and the reservoir there is really tiny so it's very hard to center that just by hand but they really don't have much room to fit a larger negative chamber volume in there and I think uh, in order for them to in order for them to achieve the same level of spring performance as the Fox there's going to be some pretty interesting uh, redesigns there that is of course if they are even interested in getting there uh, one other note from a serviceability point of view Cane Creeks are a little bit easier in that they use a standard bottom bracket tool uh, for the seal head the Fox however has their own special tool which is nicely made but does seem pointless given that there is a multitude of tools already out there that uh, that would have done the job and not cost them any more to make beyond that uh, I think anyone that owns either shock is going to be pretty happy with it they're both at least the Cane Creeks have proven to be reasonably reliable there's there's certainly been some issues with uh, the inlines the DBS has been quite good uh, they do get airy in the oil over time but that's a service issue uh, the X2s haven't been out long enough to really comment on their durability. Uh, we have seen a few issues with the adjuster assemblies. Uh, for example, this one here, where the high-speed adjuster has been wound through a little too far, uh, and the system that they have to deal with that is uh, is not very good. The, the bottom out of the adjuster is not robust. Anyway, guys, I uh, hope that provided you with something interesting there, and uh, yeah. Enjoy. Comments below. Cheers.